Imagine booking a flight and having to choose between economy and business class. At first glance, it seems like a choice between comfort and cost, but there's more behind the ticket prices. For example, a flight from New York to London might cost $800 in economy class, but over $2,500 in business class. Why such a big difference? It's all in the math behind ticket pricing. And today, you'll learn the methods airlines use to set these prices and how you can benefit from them. Have you ever thought about why seats in the front of the plane, business class, cost so much more than the seats in the back, economy class? This has all to do with the math behind ticket prices and six little-known methods that determine the price of the ticket. Now, let's talk about the most expensive airplane seat, the residence. This isn't just a seat. It's a full-fledged hotel room in the sky. Picture this, a queen-size double bed, a private bathroom, and a separate sitting area, all at your disposal. The residence is not available on every Etihad Airways flight. It's reserved for select routes, like the flight from New York to Abu Dhabi. On this 12 and a half hour journey, you get your very own butler who serves food so elegantly that you might forget you're on a plane. This luxurious experience comes with a private area of 125 square feet, almost the size of a hotel room. And the cost? Nearly 30 grand for just one flight. To put this in perspective, for this much money, you could buy more than 30 iPhone 15s, a decent car, or even a house in many places. Shocked? Wait till you hear about the cheapest flight ticket in the world. Ryanair, a European airline, is famous for its incredibly low fares. On average, Ryanair's tickets are priced between $10 to $20. Even after considering the lower per capita income in European countries compared to the US, this price is exceptionally cheap. Now here's a question for you. Between these two airlines, Etihad and Ryanair, which do you think is more profitable? Surprisingly, it's Ryanair. In 2023, Etihad recorded a profit of $143 million, while Ryanair's profit was a staggering $1.4 billion. How is this possible? How exactly do airlines price their tickets? And what tricks can you use to get the cheapest flight tickets? Keep on watching to find out. Airlines can be broadly categorized into two types, full-service airlines and low-cost airlines. Full-service airlines like Etihad Airways, Emirates, and Singapore Airlines offer in-flight food, entertainment, baggage check-in, and Apple seating space, all included in the ticket price. On the other hand, low-cost airlines, as the name suggests, offer cheaper tickets but with fewer amenities. Ryanair is an example of low-cost airlines. Low-cost airlines often face criticism for their cost-cutting measures. Mismanagement aside, these airlines adopt various strategies to remain profitable. Take Ryanair, for example. The initial ticket price is very low, but you'll be charged extra for every additional service. Want to check in baggage? Pay extra. Want to choose your seat? Pay extra. Want food or drinks on the flight? Pay extra. Even booking your ticket with a credit card incurs an additional fee. Ryanair CEO Michael O'Leary once famously said he wanted to charge passengers for using the toilet on the plane. Though this plan wasn't implemented, it gives you an idea of the cost-saving mindset. Ryanair even considered having standing seats, where passengers would stand throughout the flight. Imagine paying just $1 to stand on a flight. These miscellaneous fees, known as ancillary revenues, have become a goldmine for low-cost airlines. In 2019, ancillary revenue accounted for 28% of Ryanair's total revenue. Now let's talk about airline seating classes. There are four types, economy, premium economy, business, and first class. Low-cost airlines only have economy seats, while full-service airlines offer all four classes. You might be thinking that first class and business class are the most profitable for airlines, but that's not entirely true. An analysis by the Michigan Journal of Economics revealed that the profit margins for different seating classes are quite similar when considering space and costs. First class passengers pay more, but the expenses for providing high quality food, amenity kits, and additional cabin crew are also higher. Surprisingly, premium economy seats are the most profitable, generating $322 per square foot for airlines. This profitability trend has led many airlines to eliminate first class seating. Airlines like American Airlines, Air New Zealand, South African Airways, Malaysian Airlines, Turkish Airlines, and United Airlines have removed first class from their planes. 
Instead, they focus on expanding premium economy and business class seating to maximize profits. Now let's see how they decide the price of a ticket. Airlines have a special team called Revenue Management. Their job is to make sure the airline makes as much money as possible from selling tickets. They have to figure out the best prices to charge and when to charge them. They use a bunch of different methods to do this, and it's a big puzzle they work on every day. Number 1. Demand and Supply, or Yield Management One of the main things airlines look at is how many people want to fly versus how many seats they have. If a lot of people want to go to the same place at the same time, the prices go up. This is because there are only so many seats, and everyone wants one. Airlines use something called yield management, which means they change the price based on how many people are booking flights. For example, when an airline starts selling tickets for a flight, the first few tickets might be cheap to get people interested. As more and more tickets are sold, the prices start to go up. The airline has set up different price levels, or fare segments. Once the cheap tickets are gone, you have to pay more for the next set of tickets. But if not enough people are buying tickets, the airline might lower the prices again to fill up the plane, because an empty seat doesn't make any money at all. Number 2. Time of Booking, or Dynamic Pricing Prices can also change depending on how close you are to the flight date. Airlines use past data to suggest how many people will want to fly and when they'll book their tickets. If you try to book a flight at the last minute, it might be really expensive because the airline thinks you really need to go and are willing to pay more. But sometimes, if the plane isn't full, they might offer a last-minute deal to fill those seats. Number 3. Competition, or Price Matching Airlines also watch what other airlines are doing. If one airline lowers its price for a flight, Others might do the same so they don't lose customers. This is called price matching. Airlines don't want to charge too little because they might start a price war where everyone keeps dropping their prices, and then no one makes money. Number 4. Season or Base Pricing The time of year also affects prices. During popular travel times like Christmas or summer vacation, prices are usually higher because more people are flying. But during slower times, like late January or early February, you might find better deals because fewer people are traveling and airlines want to sell those seats. Number 5. Day of the Week Did you know that the day you choose to fly can change the price of your ticket? Tuesdays and Wednesdays are usually cheaper because not as many people fly on those days. Business travelers usually fly out on Mondays and come back on Thursday or Fridays, so those days are more expensive. Number 6. Advanced Purchase and Minimum Stay Requirements Airlines have rules about how early you need to buy your ticket to get the best price. If you buy your ticket three or four months before your trip, it's usually cheaper. Also, if you're flying somewhere and can stay over a Saturday night, your ticket might be less expensive. This is because airlines think if you stay over a weekend, you're probably traveling for fun and not business, and leisure travelers are more sensitive to price. Other things can affect ticket prices too. For example, if the price of jet fuel goes up, airlines might charge more for tickets because it costs them more to fly the plane. Or if something big happens and suddenly everyone wants to go or leave a certain place, the prices might change a lot. This brings us to some common myths about booking flight tickets. Some people believe that booking tickets two to three months in advance will get them the cheapest price, while others think last-minute bookings are cheaper. Both statements are partially true but it all depends on demand. The dynamic pricing algorithm works continuously, adjusting prices based on various factors. Another myth is that booking tickets at midnight will get you a discount. This isn't true either. The algorithm works 24-7, so there's no specific discount hour. Similarly, browsing in incognito mode or using a private browser won't necessarily give you cheaper prices. The algorithm looks at overall demand, not individual user behavior. Now here's how you can get cheaper tickets. First, consider traveling on weekdays, especially Tuesdays and Wednesdays, as they're statistically cheaper than weekends. Business travelers usually fly on Mondays and Fridays, making these days more expensive. Second, use tools like Google Flights to find the cheapest dates for your trip. Google Flights offers a grid mode that shows the cheapest flights for specific dates. You can also enable the Any Dates option to receive email notifications when the price drops for your chosen route. Third, consider nearby airports. Popular airports are more expensive, 
so check smaller, secondary airports. Fourth, look for stopover flights. Sometimes, adding an extra destination can make the flight cheaper. And lastly, compare prices on different websites. Besides Google Flights, use Kayak, Skyscanner, Kiwi, and Azair to find the best deals. These websites give you a comprehensive view of available flights and prices. So, in the end, does a business class upgrade really justify its price tag? You see, business class isn't just about fancier meals and more legroom. It includes some pretty cool perks. You get to relax in comfy seats that often recline all the way down into beds, which is awesome for long flights because you can actually sleep well. Plus, you usually get access to an airport lounge where you can grab food, drink, and Wi-Fi before your flight, away from the crowded terminal. But here's an interesting fact. While business class offers a lot of extra comforts, whether it's worth the extra cost depends on what's important to you. If you're traveling for business and need to be fresh and ready to go as soon as you land, or if you value personal space and comfort, the perks of business class might be worth it. On the other hand, economy class gets you to the same destination without the fancy benefits, but at a much lower price. If you're just looking to save money, or if you're going on a short flight, economy is definitely more wallet friendly. Thanks for watching.